Chuck, I got another explainer for you. All right. This has to do with making toast. Okay. <laughs> All I'm, right. just, I'm just saying. So, you know, sometimes <laughs> when you bring these up, man, I feel like you just... Like you punking me, you know no, what I mean? Because no. like I'm like I'm just like let me, let me just see if I what I can get Chuck to go along with the, the astrophysics know? of yeah, making it's toast. Like, you know, it's like because you know it's like Neil deGrasse Tyson, right? World renowned scientist and science communicator. Chuck, mm. I'd, I'd love to talk to you about something scientifically relevant. Oh, Neil, okay. please do tell. <laughs> Let's talk toast. What? All right, so toast. <clears throat> here's the deal. Okay. All right, and I don't know if you ever paid attention to what's going on inside a toaster. Okay. All right? Listen, but it's, it's fascinating. I have smoked a lot of weed. <laughs> I have been high out of my mind. I have never <laughs> looked at the toaster and went, I wonder what's going on in there. All right. <laughs> Here's the thing. Okay. Here's the thing. Uh, toast, if you're going to toast fresh bread. Okay. Okay. It will spend most of its time in the toaster most of the time, not browning. Okay, and is this fresh white bread? Because that would make sense. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's easier to see the browning on white oh, yeah. bread. So this is a white bread example, well, okay? Well, can you blame it? Because let's be honest, in bread society, you bread know, <laughs> white bread has it the best. They got the best. Why would I want to get it? But yeah, the seven grain blended model is coming yes. along. Okay. Uh, so here's the thing. And let me tell you something. Pumpernickel, there goes your property values in the bread box. <laughs> Stop. I forgot all about pumpernickel. That's some dark ass bread Woo. right there. Tell you right now. <laughs> okay. Some, so, go ahead. Never mind. I'm about, <laughs> I'm about to get us in trouble. I'm going to stop. All right. So if you, if you <clears throat> observe the bread yes. most of the time, 90% of the time, I didn't know exactly, but it's very high percent of the time it's in the toaster, it doesn't change color at all. Oh, my God. Okay. Because it can't change color as long as it's moist. Okay. Because I the highest temperature you can heat the bread is 212 degrees, and that's not hot enough to toast the bread. I got you. I mean, that really does make sense. It's Th like, think about this, right? It's okay, like so trying to start a fire with green uh, kindling. You can't. You right. can't. You In can't fact, if, if you put a green log on an already established fire, the log oh. is not going to ignite. You know what's going to happen? It's going to hiss out all the oh. moisture yep. for the next hour, yep. all right? Because the log can't get hotter than the highest temperature that water can get. And the water that's in the log tops out at 212 degrees. So you're going to have a 212 degree log until there's no water left. That's cool. And, and then it'll ignite. That's right. Oh, wow. Okay. So your toast in the toaster, if you keep looking at it, it is going to be your white toast. It's going to be white and white and white. And what the heat is doing, it's like, get out of there, you water molecules. Get right. out. Get out. And it's only doing it to the top edge, not to the middle, mm -hmm. because the heat is only hitting the top edge, the outer yeah. edges, right? right. So, so. So the heat is like uh, uh, the Black Toast Matters movement. Yeah. <laughs> Chuck, <laughs> Chuck you, you need race counseling, okay? I think you <laughs> All right. So. So go ahead. All right. So once all of the moisture on that outer edge of the bread has evaporated, right? it can now toast the bread That's by, by uh, breaking apart the, 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 the bread molecules, the proteins and the, and the carbohydrates, revealing the carbon. The carbon is black, okay? Uh -huh. If you leave the bread in too long, it's completely black, all right? But you have all this golden tip. That all happens in like the last minute that your toast is in there because it took all the rest of that time to heat up the water and evaporate it. That is pretty doggone cool to be honest. And I, I got a little excited when you said that because I've never considered it. However, I don't have a toaster. I have a, um, a toaster oven. I don't okay. Use so, okay. So in, in the oven, any right. oven, if you're going to use a broiler, Right. The same thing. You same put the, thing. You, you layer the bread exactly. and you check and you check in it and you That's keep checking right. it and you say it, it's not making progress. Let me go away for five minutes. No, because the moment the moisture's gone, that sucker browns 
in instance. Absolutely. Okay. What, so it's not a linear. It's not a linear phenomenon. That's all no, I'm trying to say. No, it's kind of like if if it were a graph, it would bump along the bottom. Correct. And then all of a sudden, it shoots straight up almost. Yeah, almost you know, straight up. Correct. Almost straight up. So, uh, and I know this because uh, just the other day, when you, it's so weird now, I can't believe that I'm recalling this. I said, what's taking this toast so damn long? You did say that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then I turned, I went into the refrigerator, I pulled out some butter and uh um, fig spread, mm -hmm. and I went back, and the toast was brown. <laughs> <laughs> there, there it is. So that is so wild. You, you lived this experience. I it's, lived this experience. It's, it's it's also why you can um, boil water in a paper cup. Okay. Okay, and I've done this experiment many times. So, so wait, you, yeah, I mean, yeah, you just uh, drop the paper cup inside the pot of boiling water, okay? And no, no, have... no, that's that's not what it. No, so you can you can take a paper cup, and you have to be careful about this because some paper cups have rims on the bottom yes. that are not actively touching the water on the inside. That will burn, okay? But if you have a wide enough bottom and you have like a Bunsen burner, remember these? And you, you put the flame on the paper cup in the bottom. If the paper cup has water in it, what is the hottest temperature the paper can get? The temperature, temperature of the water. Of water. Okay, and so it'll sit there and boil the water. And it'll keep boiling the water until all the water evaporates. Then your paper cup burns. This is why okay. it's so hard I to burn someone at the stake. You think, oh, let me just ignite you. This is very medieval here. Let's put you on the stake and just ignite you. You can't just ignite, yeah. okay? You have all this liquid in you. Right, the real the real reason why this is very difficult to do is because we have laws against that <laughs> yes, now. that's why, okay. <laughs> that's the real reason. That's the actual reason. It's difficult. <laughs> Thank you. Let me get out of my medieval. <laughs> so what they would do, especially the Catholic Church, to make sure you would burn, that sometimes they would burn you upside down and that way um, will control the blood or the blood would drain. And as the blood drains, then you have no liquid left in you and you burn faster. Oh. Or you can burn in other directions where you retain the blood because if you don't want the blood come out, there's some other religious ritual where the, the whole person has to be burned, including their blood. But then the blood has to still evaporate before oh. any... No, you'll die before all that happens, of course. But in terms of igniting the body, I'm saying, yeah, it just doesn't yeah. simply happen that way. And this is sped up if you have fast-moving air, hot air across the, the food. Yes. This this is like a wind heat factor. Mm -hmm. The op we have a we have a, a, a an explainer on wind chill factor and wind heat factors. Yes. Okay. Because if it's cold and the wind is blowing, you feel colder. Colder. If right. it's hot and the air that's blowing is hotter than your skin temperature, you'll feel hotter. Right. Okay. So if you put food in, let's say, an air fryer. Yes. What does that mean? Okay. So they are gonna brown your food fast because they're moving hot air across and they are evaporating any possible moisture on that surface. And the faster the wind goes, the faster you'll evaporate it and the faster you can get to the browning. Can't live without an air fryer, I'm sorry. It's yep. amazing, they're mm -hmm. wonderful. Yeah, they, they're really air toasters. Yes. <laughs> because, uh, you know, uh, unless the, the, the surface is sprinkled with oil and then the oil will fry the you know, you can heat the oil. So you're you're still oil frying, but you're using air to heat the oil to fry the food. Right. But if it didn't have any oil, it's just a fast toaster. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you mean I spent four hundred dollars on a toaster? Yes, you did. Yeah, yes, yes, you, you did. did. <laughs> you did indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so th that's everything you wanted to know about toast and why it's not a linear process. Well, that was fun. Oh, and what don't you do? Oh, oh, oh! Do, do this experiment. Okay. Take a take a slice of bread. Okay. And let leave it out until it just gets hard. A little okay? crusty. Right. Just leave it out. Just okay. Leave it out. It won't get crusty. It'll just get get hard. It's yeah. no longer squishy. And then you have another one that's squishy that you just took out of the bag. Okay. They're both at the same temperature. Right. Okay. The, now put them both in the in your in your toaster oven. or both in the toaster, and the one that had the the lost moisture will toast, toast ten times faster. Quicker. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, there you go. 
So, yeah, and it, it's already on its way to being toast. It's so, right. That's right. Yeah. That's <laughs> you leave it out. Well, why do you keep leaving the bread out? Toasting the bread, I'm toasting man. the bread. Pre-toasting. Toast pre-toasting. Uh, it's a pre-toast. And one other thing, a reminder of how surface deep the color is. Okay. Because it's only what that sort of radiative energy can touch. And anything's behind anything else. It's not seeing your toaster thing, all right? So a reminder of that is if you happen to burn the toast, right? you just take a bread knife or, or a knife, not, you know, a knife and scrape off mm -hmm. the black. Right. And then there's like, it's, and you can, you can salvage many right. a burnt toast that way. Or... And you could just accept the fact that it is black and enjoy it for its beautiful blackness. You could do that as well. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Chuck totally, definitely needs race therapy. I We're going to work on this. I know. I can't help it. <laughs> so, uh, so maybe there's more than you ever care to know about making toast, but I no. just thought I'd put that. The, the thermodynamics of toasting. That is awesome. We got to title this just that: the thermodynamics of toasting. Okay, is, of just, toast. Yeah, yeah and toast. so and the and the and the takeaway here is: however long you're staring at the unbrowned toast, let that not be the measure of how much longer you have to wait. Yes, I know this firsthand. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you got it. All right, that's all we had time for, Chuck. Uh, oh, that was great. That was great. That was great. All right. Now, until next time, I am Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist, and Toastmaster. <laughs> For this episode only, Toastmaster Chuck and Neil are telling you to keep looking up. <laughs>